In this next tutorial, we're going to start working with DaVinci's built-in video scopes. Now there's a couple different ways that you can bring up the video scopes. One option is to go to the view menu and down to video scopes where we can choose either on or off. But you can also open up the video scopes by right clicking somewhere over the viewer window and choosing show scopes. Now this is the default way that the video scopes open up. You'll notice it is now covering part of my interface. So if you do have a secondary computer monitor, it would be great to actually take the video scopes window and put it into another monitor so you're not constantly moving it around the screen to get it out of the way of other things that uh, you're working on. Now, it does open up to four different video scopes. Specifically, we're going to be diving into looking at three of these video scopes, the waveform monitor, the parade, and the vector scope, which are the three most common tools that you will tend to need while color grading. In this tutorial, though, I want to spend just a little bit of time focusing on how we can customize our view of the scopes. The first option I want to take a look at is the aspect ratio of the scopes. You'll notice this little button up here in the right corner that says 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 if you click into the button. Now this seems like a strange option. What is this referring to? Is it mean that if you're working with 4x3 or standard def video, you choose the 4x3 option, and if you're working with widescreen video, you choose the 16x9? No, it's simply whether you want overall the video scopes window, if we choose 4x3, to be more square, or if you choose the 16x9 option, whether you want it to be a little wider on the screen. It all depends on where you're trying to place the video scopes and again whether it's going to be on another monitor or not which option you'll choose. Now another option that you've also got is that you may not want to work with all video scopes at the same time and notice that you've got options to display one, two, or four scopes. Now let's say we switch to two we only see two video scopes uh, but as we'll see in a moment you can always decide which of those two scopes you want to see or you could go down to just one video scope. Now, whichever mode you're in, whether it's one, two, or four, you can always resize the window by grabbing on the bottom right corner and dragging in or out. Now, in this case, I do only have two different video scopes open, and you'll see their labeling. One is the waveform monitor, and one is the parade. These are also the menus that you can use to choose other video scopes if you click into that little button. Uh, to choose different video scopes to display. So for example, maybe I choose to display the vector scope in this window, and I come over to the scope here on the right side, and instead of displaying what's called the parade scope, maybe I want to display the waveform monitor. So you can choose which scopes to display, the aspect ratio of the screen, but you can also customize various options about each of the different scopes. In the bottom right corner of each scope window is a little options button. It brings up options that relate to that specific scope. For example, Graticule is the markings on the scope and we could drag that brighter or darker depending on uh, how bright or dark you want that. In addition, if you click anywhere outside of this, it closes up the options. You can also alternately re-click just on the options button to close it. Another option that you'll find with the various video scopes when you click into the options buttons is how bright or dark do you want the traces to appear. Now the traces are these funny looking uh, lines that you see throughout each of the different video scopes and they basically represent your various image information, whether that's luminance information or chroma or color information. And so if we, let's say, brighten things really all the way you know, to the extremes, uh, you'll notice that things tend to turn into kind of solid blocks, and now it's harder to read fine detail. On the other hand, if you bring things down too low, then you start missing image information. So it's always about finding a nice balance, what gives you the most information. Now in the next tutorial, we'll start looking at working with the waveform monitor.